I lived in a fraternity of engineers called Sparta. Now, Sparta wasn't just any old housing arrangement. It was a brotherhood, a community of engineering students living and learning together. I left my parents' house at the age of 17, which was when I started my civil engineering degree. Not only I moved out of my parents' house, but I also moved to a different state in Brazil and lived in an engineering fraternity called Sparta. So in today's video, I'm going to take you on a journey through my experiences of moving overseas, what I've learned along the way, how it's shaped me into a better person and engineer, and how you should prepare yourself if you're planning to move to another country. I like to break down the whole moving process into levels of difficulty and reward. You know, the harder the challenge, the sweeter the victory, right? So here's how I see it. Level one, moving out of your parents' house. Level two, moving out of your city or state. Level three, moving to another country where people speak the same language as you. And finally, level four, moving overseas to a country where the locals speak a different language. So let's talk about level one, moving out of your parents' house. This was a big step for me and it happened when I was just 17 years old. I was starting my civil engineering degree and my university was located 500 k's away from my hometown. So not only did I leave the nest, but I also packed up and moved to a whole different state in Brazil. Now, let me tell you, at that age, going through life on my own was not easy. I mean, if you handed me a cartoon of eggs back then, I wouldn't have had a clue on how to make an omelette. Seriously, I was pretty useless in the kitchen. And let's be real, being in your late teens or early 20s, you're still figuring things out. But here's the thing. If you are in your 20s and you're still living under your parents' roof, it might be time to consider spreading your wings a bit. Saving up for a house is a common reason to stick around and it's what I hear from people still living with their parents. But let me offer a different perspective. Living with your parents might be costing you more than you realize. It's about independence, my friend. The skills you learn by living on your own, budgeting, cooking, handling responsibilities, they will pay off big time, not just in your personal life, but also in your career down the road. Trust me on this one. All right, let's get into level two, moving out of your city or state. This step, my friends, is where things really start to get interesting. When you leave your hometown behind, it's like hitting the reset button on your life. You're given the chance to reinvent yourself, to break free from the expectations and labels that come with being in the same environment with the same people you've known forever. Don't get me wrong, I love my hometown and childhood friends, but there's more to explore and it's easier to reinvent yourself somewhere else. For me, Making the move to a city 500 k's away from my hometown was a game changer. I found myself immersed in a whole new world, surrounded by people from diverse backgrounds and perspectives. And let me tell you, it was eye-opening. I lived in a fraternity of engineers called Sparta. Now, Sparta wasn't just any old housing arrangement. It was a brotherhood, a community of engineering students living and learning together. There are several types of fraternities in that city, but Sparta accepted only students of engineering. So I shared a house with another eight engineering students. They were studying geological engineering, mining engineering, civil engineering, and mechatronic engineering. Living together, we formed bonds that went beyond just being roommates. We were a family. We had traditions and a hierarchical structure. There are the seniors, the active members, the newbies and their brothers going through the initiation process. It's not quite like those American movies, but there are some similarities. Sparta was founded in 1941, and in the beginning of this month, we celebrated the 83rd anniversary of our fraternity. So here's a shout out to all my fellow Spartans out there. 
This wall covered in pictures is where we hang photos of former students and pay tribute to some special individuals. Every person who graduated from our university and lived in our fraternity has their picture up there. And that's me exactly 10 years ago. As you can tell, I've never touched a comb in my entire life, not even in my graduation photograph. Being part of Sparta provided me with incredible opportunities for leadership development, networking, and forming lifelong friendships. Now, I know my experience might be specific to where I lived, but for you, moving to a new city or state could be your chance to rewrite your story, to create new adventures and memories that will last a lifetime. All right, let's talk about level three, moving overseas to a country where people speak the same language as you. This can be a big transition, whether you are an Australian heading to the UK or maybe someone from the US making the move to Australia. Now, moving to a whole new country where you don't know anyone, your friends and family are oceans away, it's definitely a daunting experience, no doubt about it. I can't cover every possible scenario in this short video because there are so many different situations you can find yourself in. Maybe you're going there to study on a scholarship or you've got a job lined up or perhaps you're just winging it and hoping to find work when you get there. Maybe you've got some savings or maybe you have no money. Maybe you've got your family with you or maybe you're going it alone. Each scenario comes with its own set of challenges. So let's say you are by yourself, you are a structural engineer, you don't have a job yet, and you've got enough money to last you for about a month. All right, let's break it down. First off, here's some good news. Engineering is a universal language. The basics remain the same no matter where you go, but you will definitely need to get familiar with the cultural differences where it comes to design preferences. For example, in your home country, they might build houses using brick and reinforced concrete, but in your new country, they might prefer timber or vice versa. Construction methods are all related to history and economics. If materials are pricier than labor, they might opt for a design that takes longer to build but uses fewer materials. But if labor costs more than materials, they might go for faster construction techniques, even if it means using more material. In the US, they use the imperial system to measure things. While everywhere else, we use the metric system. And then there's the whole deal with building and engineering codes. Sure, they've got similarities, but the Euro code isn't the same as the Australian or American code. And the National Construction Code of Australia versus the building regulations in the UK, which are different from those in the US. Oh, hey, if you are a student or practicing structural engineer, check out the ebook I wrote on designing retaining walls and basement walls. It's a step-by-step -step guide to structural design, all condensed into one handy ebook. I'll drop the link in the description below. Now, here's a tip. Look into getting your qualifications and experience validated in the country you are moving to. It might not be a requirement, but it can definitely give you an edge in the job market, especially if your university isn't well known or if you're coming from a third world country. And speaking of the job market, networking is key. Reach out to other engineers on LinkedIn, post more, comment, get yourself out there. But remember, reciprocity is key. Offer help before you ask for it. Show them what you can bring to the table. Oh, and one last thing. When you're reaching out to people, keep it natural. No need for stiff, formal messages or internet templates. Just be yourself, be cool, and let things flow naturally. And now let's talk about the fourth and final level. Moving overseas to a country where the locals speak a different language. This is a whole new ball game. Imagine this, you are in foreign land, no friends, no family, no job lined up, 
and you've only got enough money to cover your expenses for about a month. To top it off, your grasp of the language is, well, let's just say it's not exactly fluent. Sure, you can get by in everyday situations, but it's nowhere near enough to work in your field. And even if you think you're good enough, chances are no company would trust you to handle client interactions with your strong accent or maybe unfamiliar pronunciation. So here's the deal. This journey is a marathon, not a sprint. There are no shortcuts and you've got to be obsessed with self-improvement if you want to make it through. So step number one that I suggest is to build yourself a solid circle of friendships from your own country. Now, I know it sounds counterintuitive, but trust me, in those early days, they are your best bet for finding jobs and making connections. The first few months can be lonely. The challenges are bigger when you are a foreigner. So appreciate those friendships you make. Step number two, when you first move to a new country, it's easy to get caught up in the excitement like you are on a big holiday. And hey, that's okay. I've been there myself, but sooner or later, reality kicks in. Everyday life is still everyday life, not a forever holidays. Your priority should be studying and hustling to get a job that pays the bills. Step three, remember all that stuff I mentioned earlier about building regulations, codes, and professional communication? Well, now's the time to put into action. Start chasing engineering jobs, even if you feel like you're not quite ready. Just to let you know, you will never feel fully prepared anyway. Just accept that things will go sideways, things will go wrong, and focus on being mentally prepared here. I'll never forget the first time my manager threw me on the phone with an architect to discuss a project. I was petrified, to be honest. It was my first time talking over the phone about a project. I didn't say much, I just let him take the lead. But you know what? The next call, I spoke up a bit more. I shared some ideas and before I knew it, I was running the show myself. I was doing all the talk. So be patient, you will get there. And by the way, if you want to hear more about how I landed my first job as a structural engineer in Australia, check out my video called My Journey as a Structural Engineer in Australia. So here's the bottom line. Moving to a new country is hands down the best thing you can do for your personal and professional growth. Not only will you pick up a new language, but you will also expand your horizons and see the world from fresh perspectives. Some of the greatest ideas come from crossing borders. The founder of Nike got the idea for the shoes in Japan. The founder of Red Bull got the idea from Asia. The founder of Starbucks got the idea from Italy. More good ideas come from different countries. And only when you dare to change will you know the result and how you will change. And remember, you will never be fully prepared. Things will go wrong regardless. Just make sure you're prepared up here. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.